Hi guys, Vex here. Welcome to episode 11 of my Spellball Caves 2 developer commentary. On this episode, we're going to be looking at this, uh, all the loot that I picked up, and probably going into the Grand Melt later. But let's start things off. We have a legendary diamond hoe, so that's neat. And this is what I think of a legendary hoe. That's, uh, yeah. And then breaking two diamond sword. Yeah, some diamond stuff. That's that's a pretty good chess piece, but I already have this, so I'm not overly worried. And uh, So we basically have some diamond stuff to melt down into diamond fragments. Uh, not that we'll need a huge amount of diamond. Speaking of diamond, though, we did get these diamond boots, which have feather falling, unbreaking, and protection protection on them. Uh, so I kind of think that these are these are great, and I, I will definitely use them. Are we done here? How much diamond do we have in the? Uh, we got we got this, which I think is also kind of obsolete. We have these. We have these. Okay. Uh, so let's melt that down, and I suppose that down as well. Yes. Excellent. Uh, and I also have 12 red tokens from spawners, uh, 20 silvers, 44 coppers, and uh, just over a stack of irons. Uh, so you can actually see the rarity levels here. It's like, I think I got kind of unlucky with the golds here, actually. I, I should have probably grabbed a few more golds, but, well, whatever. Uh, this is going down, it's like, it's like 60, 40, 20, uh, and then 1. So, that might should be 2 instead of 20, but, you know, it is, it is literally RNG. And if it was by a river, it would be literally RNG. And I will never not make that joke. And you can groan all you want to. Wait, what the heck? I diamond. Let's build the. Let's just build the diamond. Yes, excellent. Okay. We got thirty nine diamonds, and we do have life mending here. So let's see. These can be life mending boots. I think this should be okay. Uh, mobility. Crawls. These are mobility crawls. Now, if I put them on, I haven't actually used life mending that much on my gear before, but the 32, 36, 37. Yeah, it's just. It's just. It's just uh, eating my life away to, to repair them, which is kind of cool. Uh, very. Uh, interesting mechanic. Um, <clears throat> I think mending is probably overpowered, and let's be well, it it's always been kind of overpowered, right? Uh, but that's because in Minecraft you you drop your armor when you die, and but I've got soul binding here on my gear. So because soul binding is in the game, maybe I should make it so that when you die in my mod pack, you drop your armor. In fact, why don't we have a discussion in the comment section about that? Because I was, I had two, I had two thoughts looking at this. Uh, the first thought is to basically try to disable mending, and so that the only thing you can get is life mending because damaging yourself in exchange for oh and then golden osmosis but that means you're using gold armor and gold armor is eh, it's I maybe mean, it's it's armor you know um but that means that in order to not worry as much about your armor breaking you give up your life which is kind of a neat mechanic. Like, there's more involved with that than just giving up your XP, I suppose. 
or or I make it so that you can just drop your armor when you die, and you need to get Soul Binding to put on it to protect it. And that Soul Binding has a 33% chance to lose a level of it when you when you die, so that you would still have to go get Soul Binding books using the Anvil and the Tomes of Scrapping to uh, put refresh the Soul Binding on it, basically. So you would have to essentially repair it, but only if you die, basically. Um, or I could just do both ideas. It is super hostile, right? So let me know what you think in the comments about that. I'm kind of curious. Uh, but we are on 1082, so we have the armor curve uh, changes here. Uh, do I need pants? Do I have any pants? I mean, you need pants to go out in public, right? Ah, oh, that works. You know what? I'll even I'll even grab some backups. There we go. Backup pants. And let's see. Where is my reforging station? It's over here. These are just commons, and that's uncommon. Let's start with the common first. Yeah, that works. Cool. <laughs> I guess I'll I guess I'll reroll these while I'm at it. Yeah, I'll stop it rare. That's fine. Cool. Uh, got a little bit better stats. Now, on to the next thing. And you know, maybe I oh maybe I should have opened these before putting so much effort into uh into the loot. Um. Uh, hmm. Well, we'll see. We'll start with these, and then these, and these, and then these, and then this one little one. All right. So what should we open first, guys? The spawner loot. The spawner loot's going to be the most concise. So we have two loot list ones, a random advanced spell, and three care packages. And we have 42 Astral Diamond Shards, which uh, results in... So this is what I was talking about. Uh, roughly, our 12 spawners gave us 4.5 Astral Diamonds. So you get less Astral Diamonds now, but then again, you also get Lapis uh, for enchanting uh, and health. You get more stuff, but less specific Astral Diamonds, which I think is probably a good change. And in the astral market, um, you can still get your get. St I made I did make this cheaper, by the way. Uh, this was a lot more expensive. So, but every every patch, I'm listening to feedback and talking to players, and uh, my main goal is obviously I want to make the best thing that I can make that's as well designed as I can make it, and. Uh, I'm always tweaking and fiddling with stuff. Okay, so let's see. How about the loot list ones here? Boop. <clears throat> Not expecting much from a loot list one, and I am proven correct. Random advanced spell. Well, that can go over here. And here, package. Yes, please fill my inventory with. Oh, right. This is the one that doesn't fill your inventory as much. Regen potions. Food, regen potions. Hey, hey! I got regen potions now. This is fantastic. Um, I don't think I need to do much in the way of crafting with this stuff. Uh, but now I can, I can, I can kind of use spawners a little bit more often and not be as scared that I'm handing you a, an astral diamond for every single spawner. Uh, so that's. That's a thing. Uh, Alright, Infernal Tier 1. So Infernal Tier 1 is going to be... Uh, this should be mostly crafting ingredients. And I, I farmed a ton of them, so we'll see.
it is mostly stuff to uh, melt down. And is designed for your kind of day one uh, usage. Now, if I think, if I remember correctly, uh, let me check. Ah, okay. Uh, I might add a, I think I might add a smelting recipe. So you can take a loot crate and put it in the smelter to melt it down into something. Just in case you ever get to a point, like, this is probably more likely to happen on a multiplayer server uh, than a custom map. Because this is, this map, Spellman Caves 2, is going to be as bad as generous as any of my modded Minecraft super hostile maps are going to be. Uh, this map, as I explained in a previous episode, is the, what would you call it, playground archetype, like Inferno Mines was, where there's new mechanics, and I was just like, okay, here's a bunch of loot related to the new mechanics, go nuts, have fun. Um, and people liked that a lot in Inferno Mines, all the random loot and stuff, and the freedom to just play with stuff, and, you know, if you die, there's plenty of loot to recover with. Um, people liked that, so did it again. Wait, these are, these are my backup legs. I don't want to melt my backup legs down. Um, but specifically for the early game and on custom maps, the uh, Infernal Spawner Tier 1 loot right now is designed to basically feed you iron, copper, leather, and uh, small bits of stone here and there, so that you could theoretically make yourself a furnace by killing monster drops. Uh, there's even a crystal flower, there's even some wildberry bush, and if I'm not mistaken, uh, Infernal Tier 1, there is... is there dirt? In this, there's sand. Uh, no, but there isn't dirt. There's wood. There's a block of bone. Okay, there there is dirt in a roundabout way because you can take your stone and make the stone into gravel, and then use bone meal with you can use bone meal with gravel to make the dirt. So. Yes, basically, you can make like a tiny farming patch with just the drops here. So you got your juices. There's two two types that can come out of this: is wild berry and grape for your uh, your juice bottling needs. Um, but there's the astral diamond shard. You can theoretically get one, which maybe is why you wouldn't want to melt down a loot crate. I suppose that would probably be the resource I would pick if you wanted to melt down a loot crate in the furnace. It would melt down into, like, one Astral Diamond Shard. In case you were ever just like, no, 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 I don't care about any of the possibilities, just, I want for sure Astral Diamond. Uh, that would let you do that. Do these melt down? I don't remember. We'll find out in a second. That doesn't melt down. Here, get out of my inventory for a second. Oh, I need to add a recipe to melt these down into, like, nuggets or whatever. Okay. And then there's also uh, the, these basic uh, rings that you can get out of it. That just basically have a... It's a chance to roll stats on a bobble. So yeah, uh, the worst infernal loot is basic resources, effectively speaking. Well, let's clean this up. And I'm not even going to bother melting it down. Just throw it in my warehouse. Get out of here. Shoot, shoot. Okay. Now, onto something a little bit more interesting is the tier 2, which, let's have a quick look at the tier 2. Da, 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 da. Okay. So tier 2 is where you can start getting something an advanced player will always care about, 
and that are that's these right here. These are the flat level gains, so that you can get you can get all your XP out, and then get the flat level gain, which will be uh, tons of XP. Um, and then other than that, there's uh, you start getting enchanting books, and you stop getting so many. Uh, you don't really get much stone stuff anymore, except for a, maybe a pickaxe or a cobblestone. And you start getting more uh, you get potions. Somebody said they wanted more potions in the random loot chest, so I tried to add that. So let's see. Got a loot list one. Section two. Uh, because the... Ah, there's one of those. So just flat level gain. Uh, and the stone you can see is more. Uh, I don't remember the roll. We can look at the roll real quick. It's uh, slash FTP. Uh, let me go into the editing mode and have a quick peek at it. The cobblestone is... Ah, yes. So you get one cobblestone, and then you get a random amount of cobblestone equal to a random number between 1 and 19. So basically you get 2, two, to, two to 20. So I think an average of like 12, 13-ish. Um, did I do the same with the Astral Diamond Shard in this? Nope, you just get the one. But do you get more loot rolls? Yeah. Uh, you actually get three loot rolls in the chest. Uh, and this is to make up for the fact that the Infernals got less common. But if it feels like it's too much or, or too little for that regard, I can always change it in the next, uh, in the next, uh, in the next patch. But some things are really high priority, and then some things are like add a add a recipe for the like iron chain links to melt down into like an iron nugget, and that's a that's a bit lower of a priority. Like I wouldn't release a patch that just has that one change, right? That's cool. A steel hammer. And an amulet of excess healing from healing hearts is converted into absorption hearts. Oh my god, it's the bloodthirster passive. That's so friggin' cool. Not that I am life stealing that much. Hmm. That's really cool, though. Does that apply to regeneration? Is it, or did it specifically... Excess health from healing spells is converted into absorption arts. Okay, so probably not. All right. That is... Oh, that's really cool, though. That is really cool. Ring of Poison Shots. So let's go put these in here, and I'll identify them in a second. Okay, what do we got left with? We are left with the Infernal Tier 3s, which I'm going to open one, and it looks like you get three rolls. Yeah, it might be three. This is Diamond, there's a Sharpness book. Oh boy, this is going to be... Uh, these are going to be great. Uh, so, a lot of silver and steel here. And they're specifically the battle axes and the hammers, and there's a mythic... Damn. Uh, they're specifically the tools that give the most ingots when or nuggets when melted down. That's why I went with the battle axes and the hammers. 
because they have the most generous meltdowns. Sharpness book, protection four book. So uh, that's really nice. Uh, what's on my weapon? Sharpness five, okay. I'll keep the gold apples on me, actually. And what do we have in here? Ooh, baubles. Ring of Gathering Storms. During thunderstorms, lightning spells have dramatically reduced cooldowns. That's cool, but I would probably need to synergize that with a spell that lets me change the weather for best effect. I wish this was a mace. Like, dang, man. I don't think I'll use this just because it's not a mace. And if I'm going to go with a silver weapon, I want it to be really specialized in killing... Uh, killing undead. Alright, so lapis blocks, gold blocks, flat XP bonuses, which are fantastic. And finally, the star of the show is Infernal Tier uh, 4. These are rare, very rare. Uh, for good reason, though, because they have, I think I've given this one a 6 loot roll, so I'm going to roll 6 times on the table. Let's see what happens. Well, there's that. Lootless 3, Lootless 2, a, a beacon, random master spell. So I rolled more of the uh, Lootless than I did the actual items on the, on the table. I got a Ring of Power. And some Sea Lanterns, okay. The best drop I probably got was the Heart of the Giga Knight here. And maybe this master spell, depending on what it is. Uh, you find the right spell, and a, like the right spell can completely change how you play the game. Uh, I think one a lot of people realize is, is Grapple. It's a very humble spell. It's like, oh, you shoot out this little... Um... Oh boy. You know. Like, it looks kind of basic at first until you realize the mobility advantages it gives you and how it completely changes how you think about moving around a dungeon. Um, it might be overpowered. Like, it might be too good. Uh, if I was going to nerf it, I would probably uh, increase the cooldown that you have to wait before you can cast it again. But I'm not actually sure if I can do that. I was looking through the configuration files to see what options I had. And I might not really be able to do uh, much about it. It would be a either let players have it or turn it off situation, which is like, uh, you know. So let's see. And then I suppose I have to ask myself, like, how much do I want to try if it's even possible to stop players from optimizing the fun? out of their own game, right? Because, like, let me give you an example. Like, you could play Pokemon, right? And you could run around the starting, the early area of the game and grind XP and grind XP for eight hours and level up your Pokemon to make, like, the rest of the game really easy because you got, like, big video game numbers. Um, and you can do that. Like, you, you, nothing really stops you. Uh, and you can do, uh, it's not exactly the same, but basically similar in my mod pack is you can, you could theoretically like sit in your a lit up room and be mostly safe and like grind whatever, however method you can come up to grind whatever to like, make yourself more powerful, you can do that. And that's something I always think about, is like, should I try to stop the player? Because you can do that in uh, vanilla Minecraft. This, this, is, this isn't even a uh, question with my mod pack. Like, the mod pack just lets there be more stuff to grind for. But, um, so let me give you another example using vanilla Super Hostile. Uh, this thing, unfortunately... Do I have the other thing of power? No, I don't. I don't have any of the set piece. Uh, that red, real quick. 
uh, where it says jewels of power and gold, and then it says zero out of four, that is a set piece bonus. I think most people familiar with Diablo style games understand set bonuses and stuff. Um, but if you don't, set bonuses are a thing where if you wear the entire set, uh, you'll get a bonus. Which, if you wear the entire set, the set bonus will give you a bonus. The Department of Redundancy Department, right? Like, it... Yeah, anyway. A little ob it, it's a little obvious, but I have to remember that, like, there might be a younger player or a player who's never played any... Like, may have just never played a game where set bonuses were a thing. And so it's like... All you see is Jewel of Power 0 of 4, and it's like, well, what does that mean? I don't know. How am I supposed to know the history of video games? And uh, A player with a smaller gaming vocabulary. That is the technical uh, term. Okay, but anyway, so my example was in... Um, we could go to Spellbound... Yeah, I can go to Spellbound Caves. The first Spellbound Caves. In the first area, you can start the map and go down the steps, and there's spawners in there, and you can light them up, because in vanilla, light actually stops spawners, or in my mod pack, I don't, my spawners don't care about your stupid light. Um, because it's it's way easier to light up air. It's Just spamming down some torches is too easy of a way to just stop spawners from doing anything. But anyway. Uh, but you can go down those steps, like at the very start of the map, and claim and secure the area, and then dig out the floor underneath the spawner, and make a rudimentary falling trap, and set up a mob grinder immediately upon starting the map, and then sit there for eight hours until you have, like, decked out everything enchanted to max, um... Eventually, I think you'll you can even get diamond gear off of the spawned monsters. Uh, depending, I think that's a that's a that's a factor of chunk age, the age of the chunk that you're standing in. Uh, but even if you just stopped at like fully enchanted prot four dim uh iron gear, you're still like like you're you're good to go, man. You know. Um, and so the question is. Like, should Pokemon just turn off your XP gain if you've been in an area too long? Should I should I try to code some sort of like weird command block system that tries to detect if you're I, I, I don't even know I'm sure there's a way. Like, of course there's a way. It could be done. It, it's theoretically possible to somehow figure it out. But like, would it be practical? Should I do it? Like, I don't really think so. Because if you're that determined, you know, if if you're really that determined, and I put the system, and I put some sort of weird command block system in place that I spent like 30 hours working on instead of making a brand new map, uh, you could, you could just be like, uh, uh, oh, oh, just, I just, oh boy, oh boy, oops, sorry. Oh boy. Game mode C. There we go. I'm just what did I what did I type? Gamey ode. Gamey odd. Gamey ode. Game <laughs> What the hell did I type? <laughs> Gamey odd. Gamey odd. What? Gamey odd is evolving. Dun 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 Da 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 da. Gamey odd evolved into gamey ode. Okay, okay, yes, I flubbed the typing pretty bad, but like you could cheat so easily, and I mean, you could just get creative mode, do whatever you want. Um. So, uh, yeah, I don't really think it's it's practical. Um, I bring up this topic because I was looking. I was looking through some of the feedback, because in the Victory Monument, there's a feedback sign, right? Um, and I was looking through for some of the feedback, and it's all anonymous. Uh, but uh, one of the pieces of feedback was basically a person said, 
that they set up a grinder with their friends playing the map, and they spent eight hours at a mob grinder and got to got 500 XP levels and enchanted everything with like full apotheosis enchantments. And then they said the map was very easy after that. And then they also said that they considered it the map's fault for being too easy after they spent eight hours grinding. And I, my face, my face win. I, I was very confused by that little nugget of feedback. Um, most of the feedback, by the way, on that forum has been uh, fantastic. Uh, I think the most useful thing that I did was the numerical dungeon ratings so that I can at a glance see like a graph of everybody's rating for the dungeons. And what's really cool is I can see like little, I can basically see like bell curves because most of the time it forms bell curves, right? But then sometimes instead of a bell curve of like, uh, like the, like the numbers are like one, two, three, four, and five, or five is like, you love the dungeon and like one's like you hate it. And like, like if the, if the dungeon is like a, an average one, like most people will be a three and then there'll be some pe like the three will have the biggest bar and then the, the two and the four next to it will be lower. And then the one and the five will be even lower. So it's a, it's a nice curve right in the middle. Um, and then some of the dungeons in this map, like it's, it's just, it's not a bell curve, but they're just like, it's all, f it's, um, what would you call it? It's like a steep ramp. Like it's nothing but four and five, uh, five and then four ratings. Um, and the funny thing about that is the people's favorite dungeons in this map are, uh, the Tomb of Nan Blethotep, the Haunted Library, the Master's Lair, uh, Ravenheart Coven, and Ravenheart Labyrinth, and Unlimited Dute Works. And what those all have in common is that they're, um, what would be the, uh, they're not natural caves. They are man-made structures. Unlimited Dute Works is like kind of partially collapsed, but it's set up like a, well, that one's, that one's probably a wild, that one's probably a, a favorite among some, uh, people just because of the specific, specifics of that dungeon. So, okay, excluding that, we've got Master's Lair, the two, this feels like the, this feels like something I should have talked about in like the final episode of the DevCom, isn't it? Huh. Well, oh well. Uh, so like, I just realized I could act like I'm talking to horticulturist Van Zept Dav. That would be the, the funny thing. Um, I like your leggings, by the way. But yeah, uh, so so Master's Lair, and the Labyrinth, Coven, the Lair, the Library, and the Tomb. I was I was trying really hard to come up with different nouns for each one to make sure there wasn't there weren't two tombs. I think there's two caves in the map, and I was like, ah, I need I need a uh, uh, cave. Uh, what else can I use? A grotto. Uh, Cavern, uh, uh, cenote. Yeah, you guys like that. You guys like cenote of the apprentice. I just flip it through like a a glossary of geographical, uh, ge uh, geogra uh, geological terms. Uh, try to find different nouns to use. Okay, but anyway, uh, but they're all they're all like man-made, or I should say humanoid-made, or. Dry they're made they're made dungeons they're not natural caves uh except i got one person who really loved uh i should make this episode just like talking about feedback and then end the episode early so that it's its own standalone thing maybe that's probably a good idea uh okay so one person loved victory cave because they love they just really love lush, overgrown caves and that aesthetic. Uh, 
Another thing I'm kind of curious about, what you guys think. Like, if somebody loves a place, and somebody else hates that same place, how would you guys handle that kind of feedback? Because I got a, I got a few, a few bits of that. I didn't get that that much. Uh, most people seem to think that more of the cave areas in the map were, uh, I got mostly like three and fours in that, uh, and some twos, like twos and threes and fours. So the the average like bell curve style rating, um, uh, and then a lot of the like made areas were. Like nothing but like five and fours ratings, but then some areas were, uh, like people were, they were polarizing. That's the word I'm looking for. They were polarizing. Uh, another thing that I got a lot of polarized. Well, not really. Uh, I got a few people saying that the map was too hard and they're not sure how to beat it, and that they felt it was impossible. And then most, but most people are saying that I'm getting feedback from are like, yeah, this is pretty easy for a super hostile. And that as soon as I got myself sorted and I got my kit fixed and I got like armor and geared up and stuff, uh, you know, I didn't really have much trouble through the rest of the map, uh, which is probably due to, uh, the 10, the, the previous patch 1081 of the mod pack where I didn't have that armor curve mod. I really didn't have a good way to, like, change the armor formula to allow for the... to make room for your big HP bar that a lot of players get. Uh, which now I can, so that's, uh, that's a big help. Uh, but, yeah, so, like, how would you... How would you handle feedback like that? If you have, like, one person say, like, this area is the worst one you've ever made, and another person's like, this is my favorite area that you've ever made. Uh, I don't think I got any feedback like like that, but it was, it was like like polarized feedback like that. How would you handle that? Do you just be like, well, I guess I'll just take the average? Or... I mean, that's all I can really do, right? Or, actually, no, there's one other thing I can do. You might think, there's two ways to go about it, I think. Uh, one is to be like, okay, well, uh, this person hates this area, and this other person loves the same area, so I'll make a, in the next map, I'll make an area that's, that's like the average of the feedback, right? You average it all together. So that would be the, uh, melting pot. Yeah, you melt it together. And I think that's a really bad idea. The other idea is the salad bar, where it's like, okay, so somebody... Oh my god. Oh my god, I just realized my maps are basically salad bars. You go up to the salad bar, and there's 16 little trays set out. And one tray has mushrooms in it, and one tray has lettuce in it, and one tray has, like, uh, like cucumbers in it. And another tray has, like, olives in it. And somebody's like, God, I hate olives! Why would you put olives on your salad bar? And then somebody's like, I, I, I was really looking forward to the olives. They're my favorite part of a salad, man. Oh, that's it! Oh! <laughs> that's it! Oh my god, my super hostile maps are salad bars. Oh, well, I've had an epiphany. Okay, yep. Uh, this episode is just going up, and it's just going to be called... Uh, this isn't episode 10. Uh, this is this is not episode 10 anymore. This is just episode... Well, oh, no, no, it's got to be episode 10, but... Or 11. No, 11, I'm sorry. It's got to be episode 11, because I did actual stuff, like I opened up uh, stuff. But I'm not going to go out to the Grand Mount right now. Like, this whole episode is just going to be this one topic to keep the comment section uh, focused. But oh my god, I realize it's just... My map is a, my maps are salad bars. That's going to be the title of the episode. Alrighty. Uh, well, guys, the uh, Giga Knight is... It's a rare drop off of the... Uh... 1% chance off of an Infernal or a 1% chance from Loot List 
3. It's also a rare drop out of the old luggage, which itself is a rare drop from Twitch chat loot, but also old luggage can be found by killing mermaids if you're a bad person and a monster. You can kill the mermaids to hope to try to get their old luggage. And then there is the heart of the Giga Knight. Uh, but the heart of the Giga Knight is used to make the Blade of the Dread Queen, which is an in-game tier sword that does 15 damage for 1.6 attack speed compared to my Gigaton's uh, 20, but at 1.1. So uh, let's whip out the calculator. 1.1 times 20.6 is 22.6 DPS, and uh, this thing makes a what again? 1.6 times 15. 1.6 times 15 is 24 DPS. Uh, it also looks, it looks, so it's a better, uh, it's a higher DPS weapon than my Gigaton here. Um, and it will scale, it has a faster attack speed, meaning it's going to scale better with sh both sharpness and with all the flat damage items. Um, and But more, more importantly, it, uh, this sword... This sword looks friggin' cool. So, uh, it is an alternative uh, sword to the dragon steel. Uh, where's the dragon steel sword? Yeah, the dragon steel sword is 1.6 for 11. So, it's actually better. Although, maybe you would compare it to the uh, Longsword? Dragon Steel Longsword, specifically? 1.4 for 25. Well, they, they also have different crafting ingredients, completely. But my point is, for a non-dragon weapon, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty stonks. So how, do I, how do I make this thing? Let's throw that in there. I need the... Queen, Queen Sword. But can I make this? Oh, I can't make that. Alright, never mind. I don't have the thing. Well, that's fine anyway. I'm still going to use my Gigaton, because I like it. Uh, but yeah, so in closing, if you grind for 8 hours, I don't know... I... If you grind for eight hours, then I am happy that the map was that much fun that you wanted, that you felt like spending eight hours with it, just grinding monsters and getting XP. Uh, I'll take that win. <laughs> um, as far as uh, the polarizing, polarized feedback, um, I think the best way to handle that is to be like, yeah, my map is a salad bar and some people like olives and other people hate olives. So... But the olives should still be here, because what well, the th oh the thing is though that like mm, I just realized you're gonna you have to eat the whole salad bar so you go through the sixteen trays and it's not like you could pick and choose you're gonna have to eat the tray well damn it it's not a salad bar it's a nut oh it's a it's a it's a force fed salad bar ooh okay so you're gonna have to eat the olives and what if you don't like the olives. But some some people really love the olives, and then you, then then, oh, well, fiddlesticks. I, I, uh, guys, designing things can be hard. Uh, oh well. Everybody loves the tomb of Nian Blefotep, and everybody loves the Master's Lair, and everybody loves the Ravenheart Coven, and the verticality, and the bridges, and the uh, everybody loves the Haunted Library. So I'll make more dungeons. I'll just make more dungeons like that. But there's still going to be occasional cave dungeons where it's just a fleecy box in a cave because. Because, like, some people really like lush caves among and ice caves, and I think ice caves are cool. By the way, 
They're pretty. So, anyway. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'll be really interested to read the comments of uh, this video. Uh, if you if you were an artist or a designer, like how would you handle the the olive conundrum? Oh my God! There's even oh there's even an area called Olive Cave. I think everybody liked the Goblin Cave. Uh, probably because goblins are stupid and funny. And they built a house inside of a cave, which is which is very dumb, and that makes people laugh. Laugh at funny goblin dum dum. Yes. Uh, that reminds me of I was uh, DMing in Dungeons and Dragons, and uh, my my players ran into a group of uh, two groups of uh, of uh, kobolds, and they kept having a uh, every day they would they would meet each other. And, like, from, like, the other side of, like, some ruins, they would look at each other and, like, talk crap at each other and sometimes throw rocks, but they were too timid to, like, actually have a real fight where people could get really hurt. <laughs> and, but they were, they also really didn't like each other. And they were really, like, they had a big grudge. And the players were like, ah, whatever, they're just stupid kobolds. And then one player was like, well, I want to ask them, like, what they're fighting over. And they were fighting over uh, which group had the which group's leader had the biggest shadow. Yeah, that's what they were fighting over. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this ramble and enjoyed watching me open loot boxes. Um, I don't think I found any. I don't think I found anything that was an upgrade to uh, what I'm using now. Uh, but I did find a bunch of crafting materials, which is kind of great. Except I already have plenty. Like I said, this map is the is a playground-style map like Inferno Mines is. I will dip into my supply of materials, though, later in the map, but I'll leave you to guess at what that might be about. Anyway, let me know what you think of the comments uh, about the salad bar concept, except how it fails because it's a force-fed salad bar, and you're going to eat the olive. Just because the other person likes the olives means you can still hate the olive, but you're still going to eat the damn olive. And I don't know, I don't know what to do about that, man. I don't know. I seek the wisdom of the comments section. Oh my god, I'm seeking the wisdom of YouTube comments. Normally that would be a terrible statement, but my YouTube comment sections are actually pretty good. Um, probably because my fan community is, I, I think, pretty chill. And maybe trending a little older. Uh, so, yeah. I like my comment section. And uh, I'll see you guys next episode. Until then. As always, take it easy.